Hi everybody. This uh, mainly is for the ladies. The younger the better. Um, <laughs> modesty is beautiful because you're not showing your skin. Nobody really wants to see that except the male people out there that think that girls are property or uh, something to be won but not held on to and cherished once they win them. You know, so anyway, um, you should keep covered. You know, you, you don't have, it doesn't mean you have to, you know, wear ugly clothes or whatever. Like, look, look at this. It's got a spot on it. <laughs> but it, it's pretty. It's rainbowy and whatever. And, and I'm not, and the sleeves go down to a nice level. Now, part of that is because I do have a tattoo. So, I'm not perfect. Um, but, yeah, it's, I got it. I hate it. I got it when I was 18 just because I could. And, yeah, I, here I am 22 years later. And I'm still regretting it. But, anyways, I keep it covered. So, anyway, um, I um, ha have not always been modest. Uh, so, I could tell you, back then, of course I was skinny too, back then I got lots of compliments from, from guys, and, you know, whistles and things like that, you know, that should have made me feel good, but it, it's kind of annoying, really, it was, it was kind of annoying, but as I got older, especially after I had kids, I, you know, wanted this, like, good example or whatever, um, I, I, uh, also, you know, was heavier, so, you know, I, I covered up more, and, and I, I mean, I will wear shorts in the summertime, you know, I used to wear pants year-round, and I, I used to live in Florida, so, uh, yeah, I got tired of that, but the shorts do not have to go all the way up your leg, you know, I saw a girl at the store yesterday, and she had on like a nice nice shirt you know and it covered stuff but her shorts were probably this big <laughs> they were um they looked like underwear it, it it looked like they looked like boxer underwear like that some some boys wear you know and i'm just like oh my gosh like th there was every inch that was legal on her skin was showing. Meanwhile, her, I guess it was her sister, was next to her, and she had jeans on it all the way down, and they were, you know, fashionable because they had holes in them all the way, all the way down, but, um, it, I mean, that's fine, that's, that's okay, but much better than the other, but, you know, her sister was, uh, prettier, and if, if I was, you know, to, to be the judge of that. Her sister was uh, nicer to, to look at. And from a decent guy's point of view, that's what they would say. You know, I don't look at girls, <laughs> you know, but I, uh, I really was thinking about that and I came up with a slogan, modest is the new beautiful. Because I know guys shouldn't be looking either, but they won't if you don't give them anything to look at, you know? So it's kind of a two-way thing. So anyway, I wanted to make a video and I want to say I'm proud of my son, uh, my son Zach, because he um, does not like seeing a girl with like a low-cut shirt or, you know, high-cut shorts or things like that. He doesn't want to see all that. He, in fact, when he was uh, younger, one time, <laughs> I'm so glad, I'm kind of glad she didn't hear him, but uh, a friend of mine was talking to a friend of hers, and she had a low-cut shirt, you know, showing too much, in, you know, uh, in our opinion, and Zach leaned over to me, and he goes, that's that, that shirt's not modest, is it? And I was like, shh, <laughs> you know, and I was like, no, it's not, you know, but, um, even like the these cartoons that 
that we've seen the, with girls. They, they wear their sh shorts. Their shorts are drawn way up there. Like, is it going to hurt you to put a little more ink into that? <laughs> you know? And so, yeah, like, they got the, the tiny shorts and the shirt they're wearing is tied up here. And it's like, you know, why don't you just go out in your underwear? Because it's practically what you wear. <laughs> so and they'll, they'll go everywhere like that so I mean maybe they don't know any better that's why I'm making this video if you want a decent guy to find you and and cherish you preferably a Christian guy a true Christian guy not just one that says he's a Christian and doesn't act like it if you want to attract that kind of person then you need to act decent and dress decent yourself so what can do you want to be a magnet that attracts you know jerks or do you want to be somebody that attracts somebody who's good on the inside you know and I always say that nerds make the best boyfriends <laughs> because a, a, a nerd or a geek you know they, they might not look too good they might be a little odd but they are loyal as can be and they're smart so they'll probably end up with a really good job <laughs> and so they can support you and you know support a family you know so uh yeah go find yourself a nerd a christian nerd <laughs> and that is my advice i wish i could go back and tell my younger self the same thing but honestly my younger self probably wouldn't have listened anyways so because I knew everything back then <laughs> so yeah people these days these young people they go into college with a degree already because they got it all figured out yeah I didn't go to college but I want you to know a college is not a place to do everything you were taught not to just because your parents aren't there it's, it's somewhere to improve yourself for your future and to learn and to work hard even if everybody else is you know drinking and whatever you rise above because one day they'll probably be working for you when they flunk out of college and you pass and you're the manager owner whatever of some place and they need a job those party animals are going to come crawling to you probably with a kid in tow maybe and they're going to be asking you for a job. So that's that's why it's important to take education seriously, especially education as expensive as college is here in America. Oh my goodness. So yeah, that's, that's a place to go in and be a light and be a good example of what modest is and what mature is and what, what hard work looks like and getting and bettering yourself so anyways I know I, I probably am not one to, to preach you know because I I've been really immodest in the past and anybody that sees us and knows me is gonna possibly want to uh, tell everybody that just because people like to dig dirt up on people but I'll dig it up myself Okay, I did things I'm not proud of in the past, haven't we all? What matters is how I act now and that I've repented of my past and I know that I'm forgiven because I am a child of God. And if you want to be forgiven and be a child of God, all you have to do is ask. You know, tell, tell God that you admit you are a sinner and you want forgiveness. You ask for forgiveness and thank him that Jesus paid the price for your sin, which is death, in order we, so that we can all be in heaven, the ones who believe in Jesus and accept him and be baptized. Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you. And that was for who he was talking to and anybody in the future, any future Christians. So. I just letting you know about that. It's open to anybody, no matter what you've done, no matter how bad you think you are. There, 
God could fix it. God could change you. Just like he changed me. And just like he's changed millions and millions of people throughout history. So, there's a song that says, um, There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. There's room at the cross for you. So, unlimited space. And unlimited access. You can pray anytime, anywhere. And it doesn't have to be a big, oh, Lord, blah, 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 last for an hour. I prayed once, and I saw immediate results. I, well, more than once, but, you know, this one example is when my, uh, I was a foster child, but my foster mom, we were riding somewhere, and she was driving, of course. I was 14, and was it? No, I was 17, and, uh, we were driving along and somebody started pulling out of their driveway and my foster mom saw that and she hit her brakes but the, that other car kept backing up and it looked like we were going to crash and I said God help and immediately both cars stopped the one I was in and the one that was coming it, immediately and like a nanosecond and, and I was amazed my foster mom was amazed she was a Christian too and it's just like that's, that's all I had to say God help you know and there, there was no, you know, dear Lord, it's me, Jessica. He knows who I am. <laughs> I'm his baby. He's seen me since I was conceived. It's a, just a little pin point in, inside my mother somewhere, way in there. You know, he, he knew me then, and he knew me before then, because the Bible says, uh, it has God saying to uh, Jeremiah, I knew you before you were formed before you were even born I knew you and um, so I believe that we actually come from heaven and are sent to earth with a mission um, but we don't know the mission until we we turn to God and seek him and you know do your your uh, you know studying and stuff and I've been listening to a lot of preachers on WMPC where it's a uh, the radio station of my church actually owns it, um, and it's dub you can listen wmpc.org, and um, it anywhere in the world you can listen. And um, our church is on there live every Sunday at 10:30, and then on most Sundays at 6 p.m. There's a there's a p.m. service unless something comes up like bad weather or some. A holiday or something like on Mother's Day they will probably won't have an evening service but so tomorrow 1030 will be on um, I have tried to live stream there this phone doesn't like live streaming I need to get a new one so anyway um, I am going to be there at church tomorrow and I'm in the choir and I do believe you're going to be singing tomorrow so you'll get to hear that and then I think the week after that well whenever Palm Sunday is uh, the choir is going to do with the drama team um, the Easter show so it's called the cantata uh, so an Easter cantata and then we have Christmas cantatas and it's all live on the radio if you're local and on the internet from anywhere in the world you can see it so it's 10 30 not just any time. It's 10.30 Eastern time. <laughs> so I am in Michigan. So we're in the Eastern uh, time zone. So 10.30 EST is when church is and 6 p.m. EST. So it might be 10.30 p.m. where you are. So, you know, um, just keep in mind when that is. Also, the, there are other uh, services or other sermons. It's time for music. Here's the news, which is depressing, so I tend to turn that off. So, um, but they, they uh, uh, live stream their news from another source. So, a lot of times, except for the local news. And anyway, um, that program guide is also on WMPC.org. So, uh, I, know, I just thought you might want to know that. And... There are, I think my favorite pastors, besides my own, are uh, 
Let's see, Charles Stanley, I love him. And Chuck Swindoll, I get them mixed up because they're both technically a Charles. <laughs> Uh, they're they're good. Charles Stanley is funny, you know. He he's he's older. He's like maybe eighty. I don't know, but um, he's hilarious. Like so many times, I I'll, I'll be listening to him on the radio, and he has a YouTube channel, and um, I'll just bust out laughing <laughs> because something hilarious he did. So, and sometimes he, sh I think he shows pictures up on the and the thing, but I don't see them. But he kind of describes what's up there. But I, sometimes I wish I was there <laughs> in the congregation. <sighs> but anyway, so he's on at a certain time during the week. And then Sunday or Saturday they have kids shows like Adventures in Odyssey. So lots, lots of good things, great things at WPCA.org. So anyway, um, I'm going to cut this short because I could really go on and on about, about God and about the radio station and all that stuff. So, anyway, uh, if you have questions, just put them in the in the comments, um, and uh, preferably you're, you'll be nice to me, because I know Christians um, are under fire a lot by other people who don't believe the same way we do, and that, that can be a complicated situation. So, anyways... I hope you all have a, a blessed day, and I will see you next time. Or you'll see me. <laughs> I always do that. All right. Bye-bye.